LS swapping an S10 in 2021 can get very expensive and very confusing very quickly. This truck has been done for about three years and in those three years there has been many parts that have been developed and put on the market and a couple kits that have been put on the market too to assist you with your LS swap. For this video I'm going to go ahead and assume that you already have your engine, your 4.8, your 5.3 or your 6 liter, whatever engine you want and your transmission. This truck is a 5.3 with a 4 60 the wiring harness is a standalone harness that has been modified. It's a factory truck harness that was modified, stock truck ECU, and uh, all it does is control the engine and the transmission. I have no gauges. I do have an OBD2 port gauge that plugs in, and it's just a little display screen. It works. I still want to upgrade to a Holly here in the very near future. In this video, I'm going to go over some parts that are on the market now that will really assist you with your LS swap and hopefully you don't have to spend a lot of money and waste a lot of time on your swap you can just buy these parts I'm not sponsored by anybody I'm just trying to help you guys out but let's jump up into it this list of parts is in no particular order I've came up with it based off of what I think is the necessities for an LS swap to get it done uh, like I said it's no particular order I'm just naming off whatever I have first on my list so the first thing on the list is headers you've got to have headers Manifolds don't necessarily work. Your truck manifolds, they don't they don't work. Car manifolds, they don't work from what I've read. I went ahead and bought some headers whenever I did my swap. The first ones we're gonna look at are the hooker mid-length headers. Okay, so we're looking at these black heart hooker headers, the mid-lengths. The first one we're gonna look at are the inch and three-quarter headers. They are a little bit cheaper. They have recently been developed. They were uh, they were not available whenever I did this swap. If they were, I would have definitely bought these. These are the inch and three quarters. They are $685. I know it's expensive, but they're they're good. They're better than shorties because they're they're bigger. The primaries are bigger than shorties. And then you have the inch and seven eighths hooker black heart mid lengths. They're a little bit more at $754. I would honestly probably if I was running nitrous get the um, seven eighths headers. Now I should say this video is not sponsored by Holly. Not yet. Hopefully soon it will be. Holly, are you listening? But Holly offers a lot of good LS swap parts and they have an entire section on their website of LS swap parts and you can go on there and you can find your oil pans, your cross members, your exhaust uh, pieces that you need and other little things. It's a very good and handy tool that they have came out with over the past couple of years. They didn't have it when I was doing this thing. So take advantage of that and check it out. Next up we have some basic shorty headers. They're a little bit smaller and a little bit cheaper. They are inch and five eighths. I've had a pair of these before. They were they were fine. Um, they will get the swap done. But they are not, I guess you could say, ideal for higher performance in my opinion. I mean, I didn't want to spray nitrous with shorty headers so I purchased these long tubes second hand. But you can see $174. And if they don't really look like that, then there's, those are not the correct ones. The passenger side bank on cylinder eight actually wraps around all the others, so that's what you wanna look for. Let's see if I can find a quick picture. Right here. You can see on these eBay ones, which is the same thing, these are, these are fine, how bank number eight wraps around all the other ones on the passenger side. That's what you want. All right, moving on to some long tubes. You have, of course, the stainless works. Um, these are actually current performance stainless steel, inch and seven eighths long tubes. They are very expensive. And you can see a bunch of different pictures of them. They're nice, they fit very well. They're a little bit of a pain to install. These that I have are headmen hustlers they went in each tube at a time I can't find any on here but as you can see these are pretty expensive at twelve hundred and fifty two dollars so is it worth it to spend the extra um, six hundred dollars and get the long tubes or just get the mid lengths they're pretty much the same thing they just don't go down all the way the mid lengths don't all right so next we have the GM muscle car oil pan as you see here they are a little bit cheaper than the ones on Holly's website this one is uh, $254 off of Jags. 
it is exactly the one that I have and I will show you the clearance that it has on the frame rail in just a second but it comes with your pickup tube your dipstick and it comes with a new gasket and windage tray and it looks like hardware for the windage tray it's a very nice piece and it clears absolutely perfect so let's check out how it looks underneath this is a GM muscle car oil pan and don't mind the brake line as you can see it clears pretty good there's a a decent little gap of space there where my brake line is. I kind of can't get up in here. The frame is not notched and it does not rub. The next thing that I see a lot of people asking me in my comment section is my transmission cross member. The one that I'm running is the factory cross member. The only modifications I've done to it is on the driver's side. I have actually fabricated a loop for my long tubes whereas if it was a shorty header you could run the run the exhaust in front of the pan on the transmission but with the long tubes you have to have two loops on each side and on the mounting plate for the transmission you could you possibly can get by with your factory cross member and just modify the plate that bolts to the cross member and to the transmission you can modify that just a little bit to fit the stud on the transmission itself your engine mounts are pretty basic and straightforward uh, I bought mine from Current Performance, but there are a lot of different engine mounts out there now for S10s with the LS engines. So you'll just have to scroll and see which one that you think would work for your setup best. I just kind of shot in the dark with mine and they work perfect. So here's a good example of engine mount kits that is offered for these engines. It will load. So the Transdap 4516 kit is your plates that go to the frame and the plate that goes to the actual block itself and it comes with the hardware for obviously an LS1 Vortec into an S10 two-wheel drive with rubber pads I have polyurethanes in mine and you can see down here the information about it it's a little hot out today quick little cool down now for you guys who are wanting to do a little bit of horsepower to your engines, you can throw on a Trailblazer Super Sport intake or a new, new body style intake that's off like a Gen 4 truck, i.e. a 2010-ish Silverado. The newer body style Silverados that aren't the cat eyes. You will need this throttle cable bracket here that mounts your throttle cable to the intake because on the Trailblazer Super Sport intake, it is different than a Gen 3 truck. You'll need a 92 millimeter four bolt throttle body because the intake is a four bolt and 92 millimeter you will also need a c5 corvette fuel regulator because this intake the fuel rail for this intake is a returnless style rail and i'll show you a couple little adapters that will really assist you with your fuel rail mounting now for the fuel rail adapters we're just going to go to ebay and type in ls fuel rail adapter and just click on any that pop up you're going to see that there's two of them because the gen 3 truck intake takes two because it is a return style fuel system you'll have a 3 8 which is for the feed line and then you'll have a 5 16 which is for the return on the gen 4 truck intake the trailblazer intake the one that i have you only need one and has 3 8 what it does is it just clips onto the fuel rail and your fuel line runs up and screws onto it you can take a rubber hose um, 3 8 hose is what i have you can take your rubber fuel injected line to like Napa and have them install a fitting on there to just screw right onto your your adapter and your fuel system is complete other than your the rest of your lines your filter your pump and your fuel tank now a couple of issue people are going to have with our spark plug wires is your number seven cylinder hitting on the brake booster and I'll show you what I've seen is the best way to fix that as you look back here you'll see that the coil pack is right up against there it's right up against the brake booster you can either switch over to manual brakes or you can get a I'm pretty sure you can get a smaller booster that will actually you know shrink the booster in size or another option is to get some different valve covers that actually mount your um, coil packs up higher individually there's no need for this bracket it just mount up higher Mine is I uh, actually massaged the brake booster a little bit with a hammer and a tire tool and bent it up so it doesn't rub my coil pack or my plug wire anymore. And for the plug wires themselves, to keep them from burning on the exhaust, I have these speed engineering 10 inch 45 degree angle plug wires. They are about $60 and they are very, very handy and I really 
I really like them. So that pretty much wraps this video up. I hope you guys took something from it and are going to be on the right track for your LS swap. Uh, send me some pictures of it. Send me some videos of it. Ask me questions in the comments. I'll try to answer as best as I can. But other than that, we're going to get over to what's going on with me personally. So if you all seen my video from a couple days ago, maybe a week or two, I had an accident. I completely tore a ligament in my left ankle. I went to the MRI results yesterday and they suggested that we do surgery. So next Thursday, July the 1st, which is my birth, my 26th birthday, we are having surgery to correct this. So I will be down for quite some times and I'm hoping I can kind of sneak through the process and get back to work, get back to drag racing and get to bringing you all better content while still trying to play it safe and be careful with everything. I've got a knee scooter, I've got my crutches, my wheelchair, my little boot that I've been wearing. I'm doing as best I can, doing what I can, and I'm just taking it day by day. But that's going to be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you click thumbs up, drop a comment, subscribe, share this video with people that are doing LS Swap to their S10, and we'll see it.